So welcome to part seven on the basic module in network security. In the last lecture, we looked at how internet traffic could be described and how we could, uh, which features we could use to describe traffic flows. Now we'll be looking into how we can use machine learning to distinguish between malicious and non-malicious traffic. But first of all, I will give an introduction to the basic principles of machine learning. So machine learning algorithms can be used to distinguish traffic if there is actually a difference. So we need to be able to use our features and based on these features that there actually is a, a difference between the malicious and non-malicious traffic. If there is no difference uh, in the traffic, um, so if the same if flow with the same descriptions could be malicious or non-malicious, of course we cannot see a difference between them. Uh, and therefore it is very important that we select the right features uh, so the right, um, yeah, the right way to describe the traffic. In the, in the example here, I will be showing a basic principle of machine learning used on whether and whether a uh, used in the decision of whether we should drive a bike to go to work or school. And so again, we have some attributes or some features. So here they are the weather and they can be described through um, the weather condition. Is it sun? Is it snow? Is it raining? We have a distance to cover, so that's a continuous um, value. We Are we running late? Yes or no? And the fuel tank, which is empty or full. And of course you can discuss whether these are the correct features, and you can also you discuss whether the values are correct. But this is something we need to select before we apply the algorithm. So based on this description, then we take in, then we take a look at some um, labeled data. Um, so this is what is called supervised learning. Um, so when we have the labeled data, we have a number of observations. So like the first line, observation is it's sunny. There is a distance of five kilometers. Uh, we are running late, yes, and we have a full fuel tank. So in that in that case, we note that here it, we realized that the right decision was to bike. I don't know why this was the right decision, but this is something I need to have in my in my data set. So what I feed into my uh, algorithm is first of all a list of observations and then the true value. So for traffic that would be a list of features that describe a particular flow and then whether it's malicious or non malicious. So of course in order to construct this data set, I need to have the knowledge in order to make the right decision. So for the biking, it could be what I actually did. And for the traffic, it, it would be some uh, manual or automated analysis saying this was clean or this was not clean traffic. So based on the observations, I can build a decision tree as what is uh, provided here. And I can use that for, um, for making decisions of the future. Um, so um, what I want to do is that I both want to train my classifier and I want to test that my classifier is actually working. So in order to do this, I first use a set of training data in order to train the algorithm. And afterwards, I'm having a set of test data, which are also correctly labeled, but I don't feed the label into the algorithm, so to speak. So after the, after the algorithm has been tra trained, I have built my tree. There are also other ways to do it but I assume that I'm building my tree. Um, then I'm trying to feed my test data in to see what decisions my tree is ending up with. And then I can compare the results from going through the tree with my true labeling. And if there is a good fit, then I have a good algorithm. And if there is a bad fit, then probably I have a bad algorithm. Uh, of course, it's important to use different uh, data sets for training and testing, uh, because if I use the same data, I would get pretty good results. So it's important that I show to my tree some observations that I have not seen before. I would also say that it's challenging to find good data sets for training and testing, and that is something that we will cover in the next video. Um, so um, to say it shortly, uh, what we need is that we need correctly classified data set of both um, malicious and non-malicious traffic. It should be representative of botnet behavior, and it should also be representative of normal traffic without botnet behavior. So if it isn't representative, it's not going to work in the real life afterwards. Um, and uh, I will now be looking at some of the challenges we experience uh, when we try to obtain this. Um, 
in fact, I would say that we don't know exactly if we can actually consider botnet traffic to be a group that is different from all the other groups. And you can discuss whether you should say, okay, we have good traffic here, we have bad traffic here, or if you actually need to divide it into more different categories. But that's a, that's a research topic and it's quite a, an elaborate discussion to go into. And so it's all about the data. So I would say that it's a challenge to find correctly labeled data set. Uh, we need to have data sets that contain no malicious traffic. Um, that could be something we could obtain from a university or company network, but it's still hard to tell that it is actually non-malicious. Also, we need to have data sets that contains not only clean traffic, but also malicious traffic. And we need to know the right labelings. So if we look at a lot of traffic, for example, from an internet service provider, we would not know the labels. So we would have to go manually through huge amounts of data in order to see it. Um, and, uh, and if we're using a more automated approach, we might introduce errors in our, in our uh, labeling. And with errors in the labeling, we'll of course also have errors in the training and in the testing. Um, so we need to find a way of getting that and that is something we will be we will be discussing in more depth in the next lecture. So thank you so much for listening. Now it's time to take quiz number thirteen.